Oh, hey, welcome to Good Enough Garage. Today we'll be working on this original low mileage matching zip tie 2010 Lexus GS 450H transmission straddled by a 1969 Chevrolet C10 two wheel drive chassis topped off by a 1971 GMC two wheel drive cab. So sit back and relax while I tell you what you already know. So what makes this transmission unique? Well, inside of it, there are two motors, MG1, motor generator one, and MG2, motor generator two. They were not created equal. MG2 is used to provide traction, which is a fancy way of saying it spins the rear wheels. MG1, which is a bigger motor in diameter, acts as a starter because this transmission came from a hybrid Lexus. Similar to what the Toyota Prius has, it has a transaxle also with two motors inside of it, MG1 and MG2. Again, only one MG2 spins the rear wheels, MG1 acts as a starter slash alternator, if you will. So what we're trying to do today is make both motors inside of this transmission spin the rear wheels. And we do that by locking the input shaft. So let me point out what we're up against. Down there is the transmission and a plate that closes off the bell housing. Behind this plate is the input shaft to the transmission, which we need to lock out. So if we were to get there from the top, I'll probably have to remove this battery tray, then the inverter bracket, and we may have decent access to it. I'm trying to avoid that and go at it from underneath. So I'll bring you guys underneath the vehicle and let you see what it looks like. And it is a bit of work, but again, I knew this was coming. It's not impossible. It is just a bit of work. So let me bring you underneath the vehicle. All right, here we are underneath the vehicle and I'm going to try to nip some of these zip ties and get all this cabling and wiring away part of the reason why i have so much junk under here is because i didn't want to cut any of the cables so that's what this is they're all wound up i'm gonna try to get these out of the way this truck is still in its prototype form, which is an excuse for doing things half-assed. So I'm still trying to make changes and optimize it. That's why it is the way it is. Oh, this looks this looks better. I think it looks better already. So hopefully you can see that 
I think there's four bolts holding this bracket to the bell housing plate. And then the plate itself is held onto the transmission with more bolts. I think what I'm going to do is see if I can get this bracket loose and maybe slide it forward a bit to get to this plate. I'm going to have to support the transmission with a jack, obviously. And one thing that when I had this truck dynoed, what the guy who runs the dyno shop pointed out is that I may need to beef up the two bolts on this side and two bolts on this side that hold this bracket to the frame to bigger bolts, thicker diameter. So I might try to drill those out first and see how that goes. Anyway, I hope you saw some of this and uh, this is what we're up against. So we're going to try to go at it from underneath. All right, folks, I didn't want to admit it and I don't, I don't want to do it, but it appears like it's going to be much more easier if we do indeed remove this battery tray and then the inverter bracket. So apologies to the person who recommended I do that in the beginning to remove the battery modules. I am a moron. I just know how masochistic it is to undo these two bolts that hold down this tray. Anyway, I managed. If you ever need a third hand and you're out of friends, they all happen to be out of town that day, a rag will help you out, believe it or not. You can wedge it into crevices and it will hold up a wrench for you. Who knew? Okay, so this here is the can for the safety box. So that's out of the way. Here we go. And you can see my design now. See, this is, I call this the porcupine because there's going to be a battery pack mounted upside down underneath. Yes, we can start that debate now whether these modules can be mounted upside down. We'll find out. Okay, so this comes out. Now let's see if we get lucky with the inverter bracket. I mean, look at this. Out. Whew. Okay, we can see stuff now. So now we're going to be going after these uh, bolts here for the transmission, which I hope you can see. And the transmission is held up with a jack and a safety stand, a floor stand. So we should be good there. It's not going to drop. So let's go after it. Okay guys, let me share something with you. The frame on these trucks is not perfectly parallel, if you can see my hands. It gets narrower in the front, and so I loaded this bracket from the rear of the truck, and now I need to take it out towards the front. Obviously the transmission is behind it, so I can't move it backwards. So let's see if we get lucky. If we can get this brace out, this cross member, I'll be so happy. It'll make it so much easier for us to mount the new plate and lock out the input shaft. Whoa. Look at that. And she's out. So at this point, we have unbolted, disconnected, removed, 
everything I think we need to remove at this point in this phase. From here on out, we focus on measuring, engineering, drilling, cutting, and basically making some sort of a locking mechanism for that input shaft that will attach to this plate or maybe a new one. I'm not sure yet. But thanks for watching, guys. We'll get going on the second part in the next video. Look, don't tell them. You don't have to tell them. How will they know? They won't even know. Well, here it goes. You guys ever work on a project and you have leftover nuts and bolts? Well, when you work on an EV, you may actually have a leftover wire not connected. This end looks like it would connect to my VCU. This truck predates the zombie, but same idea. It has two plugs on it, an A plug and a B plug. And this looks like it came off of pin on the A plug number 14. At the minute, I don't recall what this was for. Must have not been important. Um, so yeah, if you remember, put it in the comments. It may be like a high voltage shutoff or something like that for safety that I, for some reason, didn't connect. Great. Well, there you have it. Full disclosure.